Good morning, good afternoon. Good Welcome to the Shard. Glad you could make it today. So I'm here today to talk to you about relaunching your career and I'd like to start off with a question for you to think about to get us started, which is when did you last take a leap? Just think for a moment, when was the last time you took a brave leap in your career? So for some of you, may maybe a brave leap was uh, getting on the bus this morning to London. <laughs> for some people, maybe taking a brave leap is moving countries to move to the UK. For some of you, maybe it is getting out of a relationship, even though you maybe didn't have another relationship lined up. Or for some of you, maybe taking a brave leap is about leaving your past career behind to enroll in a program to pursue something new, even if you don't know exactly where you want to go in your career, but that you know that you're going to take it in a direction that's going to be better for your career and your job. So today, my objective is pretty simple. I'm just here to try to give you the clarity, the confidence, and the courage to relaunch your career in a direction that you find more fulfilling. And your start here at the Warwick MBA is a great beginning to take you down that new road. And so there's four parts of what I'm going to be talking about today. First is a little bit about me and my own story of career change. And I'm going to take you through three major changes that I made in my own career. And then after that, talk to you a little bit about the signs you can look for in your own life that suggest that, hey, maybe it's time for me to make a change. Third thing we're going to talk about is, okay, I see those signs, but what stops people from making changes in their careers? What are the barriers that get in the way of change? And then finally, we're going to talk about some enablers to get you over those barriers and how you can take your life forward, even in spite of some of those hurdles that stand in your way. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap up with a couple closing thoughts for you to kind of kick you off here during your new program. Okay, so let's start with my story. So, how many of you have ever been asked the question, what do you do? Anybody ever got asked that question? You may have gotten asked that question a few times this morning by some of your classmates you're just meeting for the first time. So we all get asked this question, and we've all got some answer, and that answer has some sort of emotional impact on both us and other people. And when you think way back before you enrolled in this MBA program, when you're a small child, you're asked an equivalent question, which is, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so when I was asked that question when I was a young boy, about five years old, I actually knew right away I wanted to be a doctor. So whenever people ask me that question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be a doctor. I was so... I was so amazed by what doctors could do. And this is a story I tell in my TED talk, which I won't go into today, but basically I spent the next 19 years pursuing that objective of mine to get into medical school. And in 2002, I did. I enrolled in the Georgetown School of Medicine. And along the way of going to medical school, I kind of realized that maybe I wasn't truly happy with this. And when I got there, it just got worse. So within the first week of medical school, you're in Gross Anatomy Lab, and I remember looking around at my classmates, and I felt completely different from them. I, I, was, I just felt like one of those moments where you feel completely misplaced, where you feel like you don't belong, or you feel like you're not making the most of who you are. Has anybody ever felt like that? Maybe in your job, maybe your last role. So what I did was, okay, I've spent the last 19 years doing this. Shouldn't I just finish? what I start. And so th therein lies the question. When you're doing something you don't enjoy doing, you're faced with a decision. And that decision is, do you finish what you start, or do you cut your losses and move on? And for me, my main issue was I didn't actually know what I wanted to do other than this, but I did know it wasn't this. And the moment you know that it's not what you're doing right now, that's an opportunity to move on. And so that's exactly what I did. So after two weeks in the program, I actually quit the program. So I went from being one of the 1% of students that get into medical school to the only 3% that don't actually make it through the program. And so when I got asked the question, what do you do, I would have to tell people, well, I just dropped out of medical school. And so you're faced with a lot of judgment when you leave things behind. You're faced with, what, do I, what are other people going to think about me when I've done this thing that's kind of non-traditional? Luckily for me, I moved on and a new chapter began and I actually spent the next uh, three years working in corporate brand marketing. And then I pursued my MBA at the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. I was really fascinated by branding and so I pursued uh, a career in brand marketing. 
and I went to the Clorox company, which is in San Francisco. And I spent the next seven years working in fast-moving consumer goods, or FMCG is the term they use here in the UK. Uh, we do take pictures like this in the corporate world. And um, I started marketing trash bags and bin liners. And then I moved on from there to market drain opener. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, people do market those sorts of things. And things are going pretty well. I was going to cool events, and I was enjoying my life in the corporate world, and I had great colleagues who I admired, and I was on track for promotion. There was just one small complication. And if you look at this little picture, like that little picture, that is my uh, then girlfriend, now wife, who was living in London at the time. I was based in San Francisco, and we'd been long distance. We met in an airport, actually. And we, we'd been long distance for about four years at this point. And uh, something had to go. And so over here on my desk, and I encourage everybody to do this, I got in the habit of writing down, what are my three big goals for this year? These are the three things I want to accomplish this year. And one of those goals was to find some way to get to the UK. So I tried to do an intra-company transfer with Clorox, but Clorox is a very small office in London. That didn't end up working out. I tried to find a job to line it up in place before I moved to London. That didn't work out. And I was faced with a decision, do I continue to build my professional life or do I drop it all and pursue what's more important to me, which is uh, the love of my life? And so, you know, you're faced with these decisions in life where you have to kind of decide what decision is going to allow you to live without regret. Because we're always, we're always kind of pulled in multiple directions. It's hard to have everything. And so for me, when I thought about that question, what, what's going to allow me to live without regret? It was very clear I need to make the move. So in 2010, I left the US behind, and I moved to Nottingham in the UK, which is where she was living at the time. I just became a British citizen yesterday, actually. So <laughs> it's a long road to get there. And things were going OK. I, I picked up a, a new job pretty quickly. I ended up going to the Goo Chocolate Puddings Company, which is a startup. I found myself kind of back where I started again, where, going back to kind of marketing events. I moved from Goo and then moved on to the haagen business. I was working on the UK business and then the global team based in the UK. And this is a picture of what landed on my doorstep the first day I started. It's just you know, one of those corporate perks that we are all familiar with, the same things that keep us in our jobs. And I found myself at this point kind of feeling a little bit, I guess, bored with my job. You can only kind of market so much drain opener and bin liners and luxury desserts and luxury ice cream. And at the same time, I found myself uh, working a lot, a lot of weekends. We were really short staffed at General Mills at the time. There's a picture. Uh, actually, my wife came to the office with me because I was going to the office so much to try to keep up with things. And I started to feel like, gosh, what am I, what am I doing? Like, am I really enjoying this? Am I finding this really fulfilling? And then uh, there was an interesting uh, kind of turn of events in my life. Uh, the same year I got married, my father actually passed away. And I remember going home and being reminded of just how fragile life is. And you have one of those moments where your life kind of stops. You know, you've been working in this corporate job for so long, and you know, you're making a good income and you've got good colleagues, but you don't really find meaning in it. And I remember this is a picture of a, that I took on my way back to the airport to fly back to London. I was actually enrolled in a coaching course at the time. That was loving. I remember looking at the back of the train. This is on my way back to London. And this picture just captured what I was feeling, which is that I've been on these tracks in my career, climbing this ladder. But then you kind of realize that the ladder just leaned up against the wrong building. And then the question is, what do you do then? Because it's, it's very natural to stay in the corporate world and to continue climbing the ladder, ladder in whatever function you've been in. Right? You don't want to have to start all over again. But the, but the question to ask yourself is, how long do you do t work that you don't really care about? How long are you going to tolerate that in your life? And so when I thought about that question, I thought, I can't do this anymore. And I remember the thing that actually took me over the edge was, how many of you have heard of The Onion? It's, a, it's an American satirical publication. Very funny. I saw this article in March of 2013. And it says, find the thing you're most passionate about, then do it on the nights and weekends for the rest of your life. Okay, which, this is a satire article. But when I saw that, 
I thought, wow, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing coaching in the evenings and the weekends. I love that. I'm working in this organization. I don't enjoy that anymore. So what I did was I left the corporate world behind and I actually launched my own business. And right now I am focused on career change consulting. And so I basically take the principles of building and relaunching brands and now apply those to help people build and relaunch themselves, to build and relaunch your own personal brands. And I absolutely love it. One thing that happens when you're working in this line of business is you get to talk to a lot of different people who are on that cusp of change. And so what I'd like to do now is share with you some of the insights and some of the patterns I notice in people who are on the cusp of change and either decide to make the change or decide not to make the change, okay? So let's talk about the signs first of all that suggest that maybe it's time for me to change directions in my careers. And maybe, maybe you felt this, which is one of the reasons why you decided to come and do your MBAs. And there are a few here that I'm gonna point out. There are more. These are the ones that I think are the most common and certainly the ones that I felt myself. So as I'm going through these, just think about, gosh, have I ever felt, have, has anybody here ever dreaded a Monday morning? Any, anybody? Uh, no? <laughs> yeah, that happens, right? Sunday evening feels okay as it gets to closer and closer to bedtime. Everything, oh gosh, Monday morning, Ugh, I don't wanna keep doing this. All right, that comes up a lot. So they talk about this blue Monday, the most depressing day of the year, which is the first Monday after the, the, uh, the Christmas holiday. Everybody's going back to work. And so that's the first thing. Second thing is I feel physically drained. So this is going beyond just emotion. I'm actually starting to physically feel ill <laughs> and drained at work with what I do. How many of you ever felt exhausted at the end of a Friday after a long work week, right? It's because you're doing work that doesn't energize you. It's because you're doing work that's energy depleting instead of energy generating. That's what causes that. Okay, so I hear that a lot. Third thing is I have to compromise who I am. So when I was debating about whether to, I guess, leave the corporate world or leave medical school, I was always kind of faced with the decision of what's, what's gonna be the, the decision I make that's in line with my values. And sometimes you're in a place where you feel like, gosh, I have to be somebody else in order, in order to fit in and I'm not making the most of my strengths, I'm not making the most of my natural abilities, that's what I mean by having to compromise who you are. Okay, so if you're doing this every day, that's not a good sign. I'm not getting anywhere, okay, so you're going in circles, or maybe you're, you're not learning anything, or you're not advancing in your career, or you feel like you're not growing personally, those are signs that you gotta move on. And then the final one is, I'm just in a bad mood all the time. Like, have, have any of you ever gotten to the point where your friends are telling you, gosh, you?" you're not the most fun person to be around right now. It's because your job is making you so miserable that even when you leave the job behind, it's affecting the rest of your life, your social life, your relationship with your partner or spouse, your family life, the energy you have to actually go and do things that you do enjoy. Okay, so how many of you have felt at least one of these things before? Okay, for those of you who have felt this, that signals maybe it's time to redirect your career. For those of you who haven't, fantastic, you are in the 13% uh, of people who are fully engaged with their jobs. Okay, there was a study that came out with, from Gallup. It turns out 87% of people are not fully engaged with their work. They'd rather be doing something else. Okay, so the question is, if you're feeling all these things, it seems really clear that you should get out, right? That you should move on. The thing is, most people don't. And what I'd like to go through is six reasons why people don't change, even when they're feeling these things. So there are six barriers that tend to come up with people. There again are more, but these are the ones I hear about the most, especially in, in, a, in a corporate kind of business environment. We're gonna go through each one of these. The first one is time. Okay, so we have time, judgment, status, risk, investment, and money. All right, time. I don't have time to redirect my career. I don't have time to change careers. I gotta start looking for a new job, I got to brush up my CV, I got to build a cover letter, I'm already working, whatever, 60 hours a week, I'm traveling all the time. I don't have time to, to find a new job. It's a, that's a full-time job in and of itself. Right, so time is a good reason why people don't move on. The second one is judgment. And uh, judgment can come from a lot of places. What I'm talking about is judgment coming from one of three places, which is family, what your family thinks you should be doing, or people maybe culturally, what they think that you should be doing. The second one is peer group. So when I look around at my colleagues and I look around at what other people are doing, what are they gonna think of me when I go and do something else that maybe doesn't pay as well, that maybe isn't as fancy, maybe I don't have as fancy of a title. The third one is yourself. 
what am I going to think of myself when I'm no longer on this path, which has served me so well up until this point in my life? Okay, so judgment's a big one that stops us from moving on. The third one is status. So it, it's nice when you show up to a networking event and you, you, know, you pull out your business card and it's got Goldman Sachs on there or McKinsey, Procter & Gamble, big name company. You know, it's nice to kind of ride the coattails of a big organization. It's nice to be able to walk in and say, I am fill in the blank in the title at this really well-known global Fortune 500 company. That feels pretty good, right? It's hard to let that go. So status is another thing. Risk is a big one. So I know I don't like this, but what am I going to do instead of this? And maybe this is as good as it gets. Maybe the next thing is going to be even worse. At least I know how bad this is. <laughs> so it's a known uh, bad influence in my life. All right, so there's the risk of, gosh, maybe I won't be able to find something that's any better. Next one is investment, and I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about the investment of time, of energy, of belief that this was the thing you wanted to do with your life. Any, any sort of investment that makes it hard to walk away from something. It's like you've come this far. It's like being on hold on the telephone with customer service at your cable provider. And you're on hold for five minutes, and you think, well, I can't hang up now. And then you're on hold for 15 minutes. <laughs> and well, now I, now I really can't hang up. Right? I've come this far. It becomes harder and harder to walk away the farther and farther you go in your career. Okay? And then the final piece is money. And money is really important. I've got bills to pay, a mortgage to pay, family to feed. In some cases, I've got loans to pay off, maybe from business school. Okay? I've got I to gotta pay the bills. So I can't just go and take this job that I would really love doing that pays half as much, because uh, I'm not going to be able to make ends meet. All right, so these are all very real barriers, and I think they're all really important to keep in mind. Um, the, the thing is, with these barriers in mind, you can get over them. Okay, the first thing is to identify what is the barrier. The second thing to do is to figure out, well, how do you get over these barriers then? And so I'd like to talk to you now about the enablers of change and uh, what it takes to get over some of these barriers. And I think it falls into three categories. And these are what I would call the, kind of the formula for change, the catalysts of change. And it's, it's clarity, confidence, and courage. If you can get these three things, perhaps while you're here in this program, that will enable you to move on in your career. Okay, this is what fuels change. Let's go through each one of these. And I want to give you some concrete ways that you can try to cultivate these things in your own life. All right, so the first thing is clarity. Clarity is what allows you to move in your life with intention. It allows you to make decisions that are in line with your own values, that are in line with what's right for you. Okay? So that's why clarity is so important. It's the, it's the thing that breaks the ties in your life. When you're struggling with a decision, it's the tiebreaker. So how do you get clarity? Well, one thing to do is to reflect on your values. So sometimes you're struggling with, well, what do I want in my life? Well, think about what's important to you. What is a big part of who you are as an individual? And what makes you you? What are those non-negotiables in your life that you feel are really important to who you are and who you want to be and the values that you represent, the way you want to live your life? And when you're thinking about what decision to make, just try to do something that's in line with those values, that serves one of those values, OK? And you may ask, well, how do I figure out my values? Well, think about those peak experiences in your life where you've, really, where you've lost track of time, where you felt like, gosh, I am just flying right now. That signals that there's something about that that is in line with who you are and your values. It doesn't take energy. It gives you energy, OK? The second thing is to prioritize what's most important. It is, it is very hard to have everything in life. When you're looking at jobs or when you start to think about recruitment events, I understand you're going to some today, you have to think about what's most important to me. Is geography most important? Is salary the most important? Is me being able to develop as an individual most important to me? But what are the things that are the most important to you that you, that you really feel like, if I'm going to get one thing, it needs to be that? Because you can't have everything. 
So for example, when I was thinking about leaving medical school, yeah, it would have been great to have the status of being a doctor, but what was much more important to me was to be able to feed my thirst for entrepreneurship and creativity and enterprising. That was more important to me, okay? The third way is to explore other perspectives, and you are in a perfect place to do that because you are surrounded right now with people who are different from you. This is a very diverse class of people who come from different functions, different geographies, different industries. Get some perspective from other people on what they think about what could be good for you. Or maybe you're thinking about doing something and you haven't quite pinned down exactly what that job is. There might be somebody in this room who's actually done that. There might be somebody in this room who can help you think about what that role could look like. Okay, so I would really encourage you to explore other perspectives. So that's the clarity piece, confidence. I was giving a talk the other night and somebody walked up to me afterwards and she said, how do I become more confident in my life? It's, that's a tough question to answer when you're walking down the street with somebody. But I think the reason why everybody wants confidence is because confidence is the mental adrenaline of life. Confidence is the mental adrenaline of life. And when you have it, you start to be able to do things that you didn't think were possible before. Okay, so here are three ways that I think you can gain confidence. Uh, the first is to test the waters. Okay, so instead of jumping in completely into something, try to just dip your toe in the water. Maybe enroll in a course here that maybe you're thinking about going into finance. Well, enroll in a course that gets you involved in maybe understanding valuation. You don't have to necessarily commit fully at the very start to jumping headfirst into something. Just dip your toe in, try it out, see how it goes with you, okay? The second thing is to connect with fe fellow visionaries. Well, this is a great place to do that too because you've got a lot of people here who can support you, who want you to do well. Everybody in this class wants this class of students to get the job they want. There's a great quote by Jim Rohn and he says that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And so think about who you're spending your time with. Think about who you surround yourself here with uh, at the, uh, during your program. Try to surround yourself with the people who have done or are wanting to do the things that you find really inspiring, okay? Third is to fine tune your pitch. Okay, this gets kind of practical, but what I mean by that is you're gonna get asked certain questions by people, by recruiters, by your colleagues, by your classmates, and I, I really think that you should have in your mind the answer to three questions very clear, which is, what is your background, which is looking backwards? What are you focused on right now, which is the present? And what do you want to do? And instead of trying to figure out the answer to that on the spot, think about it before you go into a networking event and literally script those out for yourself. I, before I go into a networking event or if I'm meeting somebody for the first time, I am actually mentally rehearsing that before I walk into the room because I don't want to stumble on that when somebody asks me, hey, what's your background? Like, you want to get that down to a 15 to 30 second pitch. And the only way you can do that is if you've thought about it beforehand. Okay, so I would encourage you to think about what's your background, what are you focused on right now, or what are you doing right now, you know, what are you up to right now, and then finally, what would you like to do next? So, or in your case, what's, what's the next job that you want? What are you looking for? Okay? Finally, courage. So courage is really important because courage allows you to do things that push your boundaries. It makes you, allows you to make brave leaps that you didn't think were possible before. And that takes guts. It just, at some point, you just have to go for it. And when you do that, you allow yourself to expand your career instead of staying in the same box you were in before. Okay, so I got three ways that you can cultivate courage. It's find inspiration. I mean, what a great spot here at Warwick in the Shard building to be able to have some inspiration. And, and people say, oh, you know, Joseph, inspiration, that sounds so like touchy-feely. Like it's, it's kind of like new agey. Does that really matter? Yes, it does matter. I think everybody should have a source of inspiration because this is the fuel that helps you go in places that maybe didn't occur to you before. So I turn to things like TED Talks. I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to people who are doing the things that I want to do because I think inspiration does matter. I think it has an effect on the results that you achieve in your life. Because if you believe you're going to get somewhere, that's the start. You've got to believe it. For, you've got to convince yourself first. You have to believe it 
in order to convince other people of it. And the only way you can do that is if you feel inspired. Okay, so the first is to find inspiration. The second is to adopt a life is fragile mindset. And I can tell you firsthand that if you spend some time in a hospital or a nursing home, or if you get really close with this idea that your life, as morbid as this sounds, it is going to end at some point. Most people in this room, our lives are probably anywhere from a quarter to a third over at this point, if not more. I, you may be halfway at this point, who knows? But life doesn't go on forever. And when you think about that and you get really close with that, I guarantee you, you will start to realize that, gosh, I need to be doing something that I actually care about. Okay, so I'm not saying go spend time in a nursing home, but I guarantee you, if you do that, <laughs> you will feel this in ways that you don't feel when you're sitting here right now. The final is to connect with your past or your future. And what I mean by that is when was a time in your life when you did go for something, when you did take a brave leap and kind of just throw caution to the wind and just go for something? And how did that turn out for you? If it went well, great. That's a great case study for how things can go for you in the future. If it didn't go well, what did you learn from that? How could you do things differently this time around? And then the future one you probably have heard of, which is connect with your future self. Like what would what would me, as an individual, if I was looking back, I'm 75 years old and I look back at my life, how would I react to the decisions I'm making right now? Would I look back and say, gosh, I'm really glad she did that? Or, wow, I'm really, I'm really glad that, that he took that leap. I'm really glad you went for it there. I'm glad you made that decision. Or not, are you going to be sitting there thinking, oh, gosh, I wish, I, I wish that you would have just done this. Try to connect with your future self. It's kind of a thought exercise, but just think about yourself 30 years from now. What would, you, what would you like to look back and say, I am really glad you did that? That's another way you can get some courage in your life. So clarity and confidence and courage. Now you're thinking, oh gosh, Joseph, wow, this all sounds like a lot of work. I mean, I've been on a, a bus the past three hours. I got to start connecting with visionaries and like finding people in my tribe and like connecting with my past. I just, I'm already exhausted. I don't want to, I'm just going to keep on going in my career. Like that is just much easier. Let me just stay in the same function, stay in the same industry. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not that happy, but you know what? I'm just going to settle. It's just easier. So you're probably wondering, well, is relaunching your career really worth it? It's really worth all this effort. The answer is yes, it is worth it. And I can tell you that from the bottom of my heart, it is worth pursuing work that you care about. And it is worth doing work that matters to you. And I'll tell you why, and I'll give you a few reasons why. So I wanted to finish up today by talking about the upside of relaunching your career. Like what's in it for you after you take all this effort to leave your, corp leave your jobs behind, your organization, if I come here to London, Coventry, do your MBA, invest some time in, in developing yourself, is all this worth it? Yes, it is, and I'll tell you why. The first is because you are opening up an opportunity to feel engaged with your work. What, what does it mean to be engaged with your work? Being engaged with your work means losing track of time. It means feeling like work isn't work. It means that you feel like the work you're doing is something that you actually care about and you actually feel is making a difference. That's the first piece. The second one is to have energy to make the most of each day. Imagine if you had unlimited energy each and every day. You woke up on Monday and you thought, God, I can't get wait. I cannot wait to get this week started. What would that be like? What could you do with that kind of energy? I was on the phone with somebody yesterday who's a client of mine and he, he has moved on to a different career. And he told me, I feel great right now. Like I've, I've lost weight. I'm learning a new language. I actually have the energy to pursue some of my hobbies outside of work. I just, I feel so much better. And he told me, I was afraid that my motivation was going to wane when I left the, 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 the beaten path. Actually, I got a ton of energy now. So that's another opportunity. The third is you can actually tap into your true strengths and values. Think about what it would be like if you could actually take those things that you were good at and exercise them in a way that other people would now benefit from all that you could offer. What would that be like to be able to do that? 
It'd be great, right? You could feel like you're making the most of who you are. You could feel like, gosh, I was put here to do this. This is work I was meant to do. The other one I wanted to mention to you was that you'll accelerate your career progress. And I mean this. This isn't just because it feels good. You will actually progress more in your career and more quickly when you're doing work that you care about because you will do better work. And it reminds me of Steve Jobs' quote about how the only way to do great work is to do work that you love. And I definitely believe that. I think you're going to do your best work when you feel most energized. When your energy level is high, when you care about what you're doing, you're going to do great work. And people are going to notice that. And you're going to, get, you're going to deliver results in your organization, your company, or in your own small business if you decide to do that, or in the own startup that you want to start. You're going to accelerate your career progress. You're going to get farther quicker. Okay? So that is basically what I wanted to share with you today. And I wanted to leave you with a quote here because I am a big believer in Jim Collins' concept of the 20-mile march. If you're not familiar with that, it's like put in your 20 miles every day. Step by step, you're going to get where you want to go. I'm a huge believer in that. I think you've got to put in the hard work, and I think it's about diligence each and every day. At the same time, there are times when you have to make a brave leap. And as David Lloyd George says, it's because you can't cross a chasm in two small jumps. Sometimes you just have to go for it. And I believe that if you decide to relaunch your career, you're going to open up the opportunity to feel engaged. You're going to open up the opportunity to feel energized. And you're going to open up the opportunity to make the most of who you are and to send your career in an accelerated direction towards something that you find truly fulfilling and something that you're proud of each and every day. And the last thing I wanted to say was enjoy the ride. This is probably not the best metaphor for today. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy the ride, you know, enjoy the time you've got here at Warwick and make the most of meeting new people, try some different things, push yourselves a little bit. My challenge to you is to push yourself outside of your comfort zone because that's how you're going to grow. And there's a concept about how people tend to feel like they have to achieve something to be happy. What I would encourage you to do is to happily achieve. Enjoy the ride as you're trying to figure all this out because your career is going to go in a twisty, curvy way. And uh, the best way you can get the most out of it is to enjoy it along the way. Thank you very much. <laughs>